Hello friends! <laughs> In today's video we're gonna sew <laughs> we're gonna sew this beautiful straight relaxed fit shirt. It is a totally my thing and it gives me a kind of romantic Victorian style vibes. It has a lot of interesting details such as puffed sleeves, gathers, loop buttonholes and decorative pleats that go till one sleeve's end through the whole garment and till the other sleeve's end, both on the back and on the front. It is a Vicky Sew slicer pattern, by the way. I will leave the link in the description. I can't wait, guys, for you to sew this with me, so yeah, let's get started! Don't forget to pre-wash and iron your fabric, so the shirt won't shrink after its first wash. And then cut all the pattern pieces out. I've listed all of them out loud in my previous videos, but now I don't think it was so necessary to do so, as they are all listed in the pattern description. What do you guys think? Some pieces should be lined with a fusible interfacing, but I'll do it gradually, as I go through the sewing process. I started by making gathers at the upper edges of two front pieces and at the center of the back. I stitched two parallel lines 15 and 10 mm off the upper edges using a 4 mm stitch stroke, starting and ending each of them without bartex and according to the pattern marks. Then I pulled the lower threads and made gathers. You can find the gather length information on your pattern. I think it can slightly differ depending on the pattern size. Mine is 38th European, so my gather lengths were 12 cm for the back and 9.9 .9 cm for each of the front bodice piece. I also secure each of the gather's end with some knots, so that its length won't change. When I'm happy with the lengths, I distribute the fabric evenly with fingers and press each gather very carefully, so it is nice and flat. As you all remember from the cutting stage, we have two yokes, an inner and an outer one. I place the outer one's lower edge on the upper edge of the back piece right sides inside and secure them together with some pins. Then stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. I do the same for two front parts as well. Then I make a temporary line of stitches 2 cm off the upper edge using a 4 mm stitch stroke without bartex. We need this for making a decorative pleat only and we'll remove it in the end. Press the seams flat. Then turn seam allowances to the yoke and press again. Then I placed an inner yoke's lower edge on the outer ones 
as it is shown in the video. Secure them together with pins and stitched with a 1 cm seam allowance. But to make sure everything was neat at the right side, I stitched on the right side, 1 cm off the edge of our temporary line of stitches. Press the seams flat and then turn the inner yoke up to meet the outer one. Let's move on to the shoulder seams. Secure the upper edges of the front and back outer yokes together with pins right sides inside. Stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. Press the seam flat, then press it open. Repeat the same steps for the inner yokes and turn the thing out. Pin the front parts with the back one together, right sides inside, at their side seams. Stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. Hem the edges with an overlock. Press the seams flat and then turn them to the front parts of the shirt. To make the shirt's bottom edge neat, I drew a line with an erasable marker, 2 cm off the edge, on the wrong side. Then I cut off the seam allowance at the side seams to this line, as shown in the video. This will help to avoid extra bulk. Press the shirt's bottom edge to the line. Bend it one more time and press again. Then stitch 1 cm off the bent edge. Don't forget to press the seam. Then I made loop buttonholes for the future plackets. Fold a stripe of bias tape fabric in half along its longer side and stitch 4 mm off a bent edge. I made the line of stitches go diagonally at the end, so it would be easier to turn the thing out later. Then cut the half of the seam allowance off. Then I turned the thing out using a thick needle with a thread. Brace yourself, this could take some time. When you finally succeeded, press the string so that its seam is on one side center and doesn't twist.
cut to 18 5 cm length pieces. These are our future loop buttonholes. My next step was cutting out some fusible interfacing parts. I needed four cuffs, two right and two left plackets, and two neckband pieces. The interfacing shouldn't be too light or too heavyweight, as these pieces should be interfaced entirely, they could shrink during the process. To avoid this, we are going to use a so-called rough cutting. This means that we fuse the interfacing on a larger piece of fabric first and only then cut the needed piece out using our pattern. Mark the future loop buttonholes on the upper right placket using our paper pattern. Bend a loop and place its right side, the one without a seam on it, on the placket's right side using the just made markings. Secure it with hand stitches. Repeat for all 10 plackets and 8 cuff loops. It is also necessary to hand stitch the outer and lower yokes together at the neck hole. After that, secure the shirt's front parts with the inner plackets with pins, right sides inside, of course. Mind that the plackets are 1 cm longer at the bottom. This is exactly how it was intended to be. I mark it with an erasable marker. Stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. Press the seams flat and then press them open. After that, turn the seam allowance to the placket and press once again. I drew a line 15 mm off the inner edge of each inner placket with an erasable marker. And then press this edge to the line. Pin the inner plackets to the outer ones and stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. Press the seams flat, press them open. After that, 
Return the seam allowance to the inner placket and press once again. Stitch 1 cm off the just made seam on the inner placket side, thus securing the seam allowance to it. Pin the placket's bottom edges together, right sides inside, and stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. You do the same with the placket's upper edges, but stop stitching at the mark. Cut the seam allowances off as it is shown in the video. Turn the placket's corners out, making them neat with a bodkin. Bend the placket along its central seam and press. Stitch in the ditch to secure the inner placket to our shirt. Pin inner and outer collar stands together, right sides inside. Stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. Use a smaller stitch stroke at the rounded corners, so they'll turn out nice and neat. Cut the seam allowance off by half and at the rounded corners by 7 mm. Press the seam flat, press it open at the collar's center part and then press the seam allowance to the inner collar's side. Stitch 1 mm off the just made seam on the inner collar stands side, thus securing the seam allowance to it. Start and end the seam at equal distance from the corners and make bar tacks. Secure the threads inside. Turn the collar out, making its corners neat. I used a knitting needle for that. Fold the collar in half and press. Pin the outer collar to the neck hole and stitch with a 1 cm seam allowance. Press the seam flat. I cut the seam allowance by several millimeters and then cut off some of it inside the layers to reduce the bulk. I also made some perpendicular cuts in the seam allowances at bent areas. Press the seam allowance to the collar stand.
Earlier I made a line of stitches 8mm of the inner color's free edge. And now I am bending it under using this line. Pin the inner collar stand in place and secure it with hand stitches. Stitch in the ditch. Press the seam. Remove the hand stitches.